In this video, we'll learn about modeling composite plates. Composites are materials made of laminates, and laminates could have orthotropic material properties, and these composites will have stacking numbers based on the orientation of the, uh, the laminates. Don't worry if you aren't familiar with composites. As we go through this example, you will learn about them and understand what that means. So I have written the script in here to model a composite plate in tension. And the reason I'm using this example is that composite plates have an interesting uh, property. And that is, if the stacking sequence of the laminates is not symmetrical, and if you pull them or put them in tensile loading, they will bend. But if the stacking sequence of the laminates in a composite plate is symmetrical, and if you pull them, they will act like an isotropic, isotropic material, and they will just expand without bending. So the script in here starts with Finny to finish um, any stage of simulation that we have been at, and backslash clear to clear database. And then I have prep seven to start pre-processing. So the first thing I want to do in pre-processing is to select the element type. And I select element type 190 as reference number one. So element type 190, as I've shown in here, is a solid shell, which is basically a solid element with shell properties, which means you can define multiple layers along the length of the solid model. And each of those layers could re represent a laminate uh, and the composite plate. So that's why I've picked element 190, element type 190, a solid shell with multiple layers and a, and a three, 3D volume. Here, real constant isn't re really necessary for solid shell 190, so I haven't given any values to that. And I have defined an orthotropic material model in these lines. As you can see, I have given EX, EY, EZ, which are the Young's moduli in X, Y, and Z directions. Then I have given the shear moduli in XY, YZ, and XZ planes, and the Poisson ratios in all three planes. So this is an orthotropic material property as opposed to isotropic. And these numbers cannot be given randomly and arbitrarily. There is a relationship between these numbers, and these values can be found on literature for different kinds of composite materials or uh, laminates. So I've picked these values for an orthotropic material model and I have defined a section type shell. So section type shell. And it doesn't have any components. So if I come find the section type command in here, under S section type, I see that one of the components or one of the items is shell. And if I go to section data for a shell, finding the shell in this documentation, there's pipe, there's tepper, there's axis, and there's shell. The first one is thickness and then the material model, and then theta, which is the orientation. So we have orthotropic material model in here, which means the properties of the material is different with respect to the direction. So there's x, there's y, and there's z. That's why we have to define the orientation of each layer in the section type. So what I have done in here is I've given 0 0.002, which is two millimeter thickness for each of the layers. So you have four layers of 0 0.002 meters. Material model is one, which is the orthotropic material model I've defined. So this is the same for all the four layers. What is different is the orientation angles. So first layer is at zero degree orientation and then second one 
third one and fourth one, let me update them accordingly. This is second at 30 degree orientation. And then the third one is at 60 degree. And then the last one, or the fourth one, is at 90 degree. So before moving forward, let's see what I have got in ANSYS APDL by copy and pasting this portion of my code. So I come here, copy it, and paste it in there. Click yes. I don't see much happening on this screen, but if I come to pre-processing and go to sections on the shell, layup, and plot section, section one, you see that I have four layers defined for me. One is at zero, then at 30, then at 60, and then at 90. So what happens is that there is no plane in between these four layers that I could draw and see that there is symmetry between the sequencing of the laminates. That's what, that's what uh, a unsymmetric sequencing of laminates means. Now if I come back to my script, the rest of the lines are pretty easy. So I have created a block here of 0.8 by 0.4 by 0.008. And the reason I've picked 0.008 is that all of my layers are at 0.002. I have four of them. So the summation of these would be 0.008. That's why I've defined uh, that for the length of my uh, block in the Z direction. So if I copy that in here, see that the block is made for me. Now going back to the script, here I've set, set the element type to 0.1, real constant to 0.1, material to 0.1, and section to 0.1. So this line means set active section type to 1, which is four layers of laminate, and then element size is 0 0.04 and vmesh means mesh volume 1. So if I do these lines and copy in here so my element type is created or my mesh is created now here I'm selecting nodes, select nodes at x equals zero by using n cell comma s, which means select nodes, LOC for location, x is for what kind of location, which direction, and z or zero is the value. And then I'm saying fix and x direction, which is basically a um, symmetry boundary condition on this plane. So if I look at it from 2D, here I'm saying don't move in the x direction. Basically, I'm applying a symmetry boundary condition. Then here, I'm doing the same thing, except in the y direction, I'm saying select nodes at y equals 0 and then fix at or fix in y direction and then select everything. So if I copy these lines there See that the those exophilum have applied for me. That's the symmetry boundary conditions. And then here I'm selecting one of the nodes and applying a displacement uh, basically in z direction. And that is to ensure that there is no free or 
rigid body motion in the model. So I'm picking the node at location x0, y.4, and z0. I'm saying node displacement in the z direction using the d command. So if I do this and put it in here, that is a node in there. If I zoom that, move this window away, you see that that node is fixed in the z direction. Go back to the script. Now I'm selecting nodes at x location of 0 0.08. So select nodes at x equals 0.8 and apply 100 pascals tensile pressure and then select everything and then everything is done after that I can just come set analysis type to static and solve and then finally start in post-processing so post-processing and show displacement vector sum. So if I copy everything from here all the way to post-processing and paste it there and wait for the solution and the solution is done, if I zoom out to see everything and look at it from the side or this side probably we can see that with the displacement or with the tensile pressure the composite plate which has unsymmetric stacking of uh, laminates has bent again if I look at it from this direction we can see that and that is what we were trying to show in this example now if I change the sequences to make this a um, symmetric sequence of laminates, I should see that this plate will expand without bending. And that's what I have done in here. The only difference between this script and the previous script is that I have created a symmetric sequence of laminates. So it goes from 0, 30, 60, 90, and then 90, 60, 30, 0. So between the fourth layer and the fifth layer, I can draw a symmetry plane. Let's just see what happens so far. I paste this here and here. I just want to see the stacking of sequences or uh, laminates. So 0, 30, 60, 90, and then 90, 60, 30, 0. Again, between these two plates I, or laminates, I can draw a symmetry plane. The rest is basically the same. The only, again, the only difference not in here is that the layers are at 0.1 millimeters to keep the, the um, or 0 .1, 0 0.001 meter, which is one millimeter, to keep the thickness of the block the same as before. And the rest is again, exactly the same as before. So I'm just gonna copy it, paste everything in ANSYS and see how it would deform. And if I take a look at it from top, see that it has just expanded. It doesn't bend anymore, again, from top view. So in this example, we showed how to define orthotropic material models and section types or section orientations to create symmetric and unsymmetric sequencing of laminates in a composite material.